some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> And welcome everybody to our daily gun show. Or what the hell? Saying that out of habit. Welcome everybody. You all welcome the old team right now to uh, just a show I'm doing. I figured uh, I'm doing some research here on my computer, and I didn't see anything live. So uh, instead of listening to nothing, I'm going to listen to whatever this is: government agents versus the phantom legend, legion, whatever that is. Some old movie. And just do this research on the computer here. I invited a bunch of people that are pretty interested in what we're doing in the world. So uh, we'll see if anybody shows up and then we'll have a conversation with them. But until then, I'm going to consider this to be an interactive research session. So uh, this is not our first time at the uh, first time at the dance. So we're uh, good, but Yolke knows what we're talking about here. He's been around since a long time now, at least. Well, a lot of people have been around for a long time. He's been around in the conversation that's been fostered on the YouTube uh, side of the internet for uh, years. And uh, this is not the first time that people have needed to come to the challenge of liberty, right? Cost of liberty is eternal vigilance. That means two things, eternal means forever. Vigilance means you got to watch out and you got to do stuff every once in a while. So uh, as Mule Team knows, we got to come to the table and do stuff. And things have been attempted in the past and uh, going forward and doing the same thing over and over is a waste of time. So instead, why don't we uh, uh, try doing something a little different each time? Uh, let's try to evolve and let's try to grow and uh, outpace the other side who hopefully can't adapt fast enough to keep up with us. All right, well, so we have 14 days, and you can sit around doing nothing. Um, Texas has the solution. What's all that? Um, we got 14 days, so we can either sit around moping or complaining or worrying about it, or we can do something for those 14 days. And I figured in order to have uh, a valid, efficient discussions about this as soon as possible, let's get some, some info down. So I was getting ready to do some of that. And... Unless people join in, I'm not going to narrate it because then I won't get what I'm trying to do done. So I'm just going to get into it. Uh, we got the text chat right here. You can see what's going on there. Um, if some of the people I invited in, if Enrique wants a link, let me know. I can send you a link. I'm sure you've got something to add. Otherwise, I'm not really looking just to have a general conversation for no reason. Uh, you know, another bunch of hot air flapping around. You got plenty of places to hear hot air flapping around. Okay, well, this is one of the people that I invited. We'll jump in here in a bit. No hurry. I'm going to be live for about an hour till the Daily Gun Show starts. But I'm basically going to do some research. Now I'm just going to shut up and uh, well, maybe I can say stuff while I'm talking. We'll see. I'm not really good at talking and typing. So anyway, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to call this collaborative research or, yeah, I guess that's the way I say it. I'm not going to keep looking for new words. Um, collaborative research. I'm looking to create something that summarizes the situation, what we got going on right now without looking too far into every little nook and cranny uh, i just started accumulating some basic stuff here uh, so that i can eventually i uh, i'm a visual person so once i have it accumulated it starts to make more sense to me and then potentially put it into some sort of a, a visual way to get the information across to people again so that we're not just running around their heads cut off they win when we aren't efficient and i'm not going to say organized because that's bullshit. We just have to simply be all willing to get up and do something. Now, if we run around like complete spazzes, then yeah, we're not efficient. But as long as we all have some common sense and do something, they can't stop us from doing stuff. And we're actually better off when we're by ourselves. It's ridiculous. Only the fakers and the, the cowards are gonna suggest we all need to work together. So uh, in order to for all of us to work more efficiently, let's get some of this information out there so that we're not all guessing or trying to remember and Nobody's going to tell me that they can remember what happened in 16 or 12 or any of these other years that matter for what we're talking about here. Um, so what I'm looking at is not necessarily to talk about news of the day, but instead I'm going to be researching the ATF's situation with braces specifically, which technically I think started in 2012. Somebody could tell me if I'm wrong, but 
in 2012 is when they finally accepted uh, an ATF, a letter to the ATF technology branch which, by SB Tactical, which they asked for a uh, brace for large caliber pistols to assist with disabled shooters. And I can remember him saying, yeah, that's okay. And then that hit in the scene in 2012. And that, that changed the playing field for a little while. And then in 2015, we had a situation where Friday afternoon before SHOT Show, while people, most people were in, tra in transit to the show, they, uh, I guess it should, should be soft, it's super annoying. This will copyright me. Um, uh, with everybody going to the show, they told us that you couldn't bring the, the, the brakes up to your shoulder. That would become a felony. That would become a federal felony, creating a machine gun. Never, you know, it's completely unprecedented. Uh, the act of the position of shooting was an act of manufacturing. You know, that's important. And then at some point they laid off on that. And I honestly do not remember off the top of my head what the specific was there. But at some point, I do remember, was it, oh, man, when was that? At some point they said, eh, and they started letting people do it. It got poked a little bit and they said, yeah, let's go for it. And then, uh, so I need to figure out that little gap that's going to go somewhere in here. And then, of course, now we have the most recent stuff. And without trying to, I'm not trying to up nobody or show no secrets or nothing. I just want to have it so that we understand a timeline of what the situation is. And then once we have a timeline, have some people that know what's going on, uh, it's perhaps to uh, offer some insight as to uh, the significance of various things or the relationships about things. I suspect uh, there's some reasons why they're doing this and I'm not going to accept the obvious ones. So uh, there's a lot of nuance to this and a lot of facets and, and only a person who's never accepted a challenge, a person who's never had to deal with adversity doesn't see the opportunity here. We have a lot of precedent going forward and anybody who's going to talk about sitting down and stopping isn't thinking about what we could be doing going forward. We have the ADA is potentially a situation. We have more doctors on board than we've ever had before. Uh, since the last time this stuff was uh, dinked with. We have new organizations on the table uh, which have memberships that are unprecedented and the connections and the potential we have for facilitation of uh, information around those aspects is nothing that they've ever seen before. They've only, the others, the antis, have only ever dealt with a fictitious NRA and I'm putting up my effing quote signs for that. The NRA, right? That's bullshit. That's always been their bullshit. And uh, that might be their downfall. So anybody that's discouraged isn't paying attention. We've got a lot of potential right now. And uh, we'll see if anybody else jumps in. Otherwise, uh, let's see. So let's see. Um, no, it wasn't. Here it is. Erswell said that Texas has the solution. Uh, Texit bill, where they come back in session. Uh, we could see referendum. I don't know. What is Texit? Some kind of bullshit. Secession. Not interested in that. Um, so let's see. We're going to go over here and what was I typed in before? Uh, ETF brace. We'll type that in there. Uh, look what happens. You get some kind of flip thing. So there's a lot of stuff recently here. Hmm. I'm using the duck, not Google. But I don't know if it's still the Google engine, I suspect. Um, I'm going to put in 2015. Let's see some articles from then. So this is a new one that mentions 15. This thing only lets me choose the past year. Looks like a lot of these are newer. So there's lots of stuff going on out there. Um, obviously, there's videos. So I'm on YouTube, so I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with videos and that. Then there's, of course, the other stupid platforms that exist, you know, Twitter and Facebook and crap. But then uh, there's all these forums out there, and that's interesting. Uh, of course, now there's Discord, which I'm not a big fan of, and I suspect uh, if you did a lot of searching like this, you're not going to find Discord. I never see Discord in search results, and that's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of it, because a forum 
it's basically Discord with a bunch of, it's like an old fashioned Discord. Uh, this is the difference is you can find stuff that's from 2016 that's still posted. So you get some insight as to the thoughts and mindset of everybody who's posting, if you want to read through it. Uh, but you definitely get the, uh, you can data mine, you can get the nuggets out of here that we might need. So let's see. So this was in 2016. It looks like uh, Jared was posting something about uh, ETF. Oh, this is somebody posted something six months ago to edit this post. So is this one backwards? Is that how this one works? Yeah. So this one, if I go this way to the back. I don't know when it was, probably around 14, the forum started becoming just big link piles of all the videos, but I guess that's just our tendency to get so much more information going across the video. Okay, so I just saw my email, thanks for jumping in. I'm looking for strategies on research and any insight you might have, mm -hmm. specifically the braces, but uh, for people that don't know, you just want to really look, say what your deal is, what are you doing here? Oh yeah. Hi chat. Uh, my name is Walt uh, and I do basically a lot of arguments and um, I talk about conversations and philosophy behind the second amendment and the gun control debate. Uh, so I'm kind of focused on reapproaching stuff from a different angle to get conversations to be productive. So I reach across the aisle with a lot of people. Um, I'm a two way absolutist, uh, I'm pretty cool with the idea of McNukes and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm about as, uh, I think, pro 2A as you can get. If if it's arms, I want you to be able to have it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Yeah, well, uh, yeah I met Malt when uh, they, uh, the uh, Second Amendment Foundation was putting their big toe in the water with live events with a Zoom sort of a seminar, I guess, uh, last year before the Gun Rights Policy Conference. And... Uh, I've been watching most videos ever since. So um, thanks for jumping in. And uh, again, I'm um, just really trying to create, basically let's say I'm gonna create a, um, what do they call it, infographic. And you know, there's probably a billion different ways to set up something like that. I just have Adobe Illustrator open over here, which is a graphic software that'll work for this. Oops. And then uh, a browser window here, which is um, the one called DuckDuckGo. So I'm trying mm -hmm. not to use Google. And then, uh, this part here that I almost closed down was is the chat that we're in here. And uh, so anybody who's out there on the YouTube side, I don't bother streaming to Facebook. Number one, you got to pay for that. Number two, I don't like Facebook, so I don't stream to it. So um, I'm just watching the YouTube chat. I just figured I was doing this anyway, and no one was live. So I would just go live for a little bit and uh, offer the opportunity for anybody who might want to jump in and, and throw some insight. So with all that, uh, anything you want to start with? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of digging in on um, my side of my side of things. I'm, I'm going to try to check some academic databases. I'm not sure what I'll pull up, um, but I'd be interested in seeing if there's any, I guess, more of more of an argumentation centric basis for any of this regulation. I I'm not I'm un, I'm I think it's unlikely, but. I'm going to start like uh, hitting up like fill papers and Google Scholar and seeing what I can dig up. My goal is to um, to clarify the situation. So we've got the situation with the braces happening right now, but the bigger picture is that we've got an ATF, an agency in the executive branch who has decided to reevaluate or whatever the word would be, the interpretation of the laws that they're supposed to both enforce and and uh, uh, administer or whatever. So um, they've decided that something has changed in the world and their laws are getting too vague again, which they were written in 1934. So it makes sense that something that's old would be you know, not written all that great. So they decided that it's taken whatever and then they've, they've done that. So again, without getting into too many specifics, there's a million places you can go to find out the details of all what's happening at the moment. But in the bigger picture, it's happening again. All that stuff I just tried to you know look at it from the big picture is mm -hmm. happening again. So from my perspective, this is not even the first time this has happened since this guy, this first guy that chimed in here, Mule Team. He's been around since at least 2013. 
And uh, you know, I can think of many times that it's this situation has happened since then and to both positive and negative consequences, right? So um, we don't learn from our positives all the time, at least we don't appreciate the positives, but uh, we can learn uh, from both positives and negative situations. So that's what I'm trying to do is just get a bigger picture of what the situation is, basically the ATF being the piece of the executive branch deciding to do this change as a procedure and um, without getting bogged down in every little piece of every little law book, I'm trying to put the broad strokes of that down. You know, it's some sort of infographic so that when people are having discussions, for example, yesterday when the news started to break and the, the regurgitation, you know, the, the ripple started to happen, the, I heard it and now I'm going to repeat it, which is necessary. I'm not, you know, it's just the way it is, but it's going to change. So when the thing says, hey, there's a deal where the ATF is going to require a 14 day blah, blah, blah. And then if that part gets omitted, the ATF is requiring is all it's heard. So when we have that situation where limited information is available and and people attempt to fill in blanks or you know it just happens when people only hear a portion portion part of a message their tendency is to fill in gaps and when that happens too many times too many good intended uh, assumptions turn into chaos and the other side can use that against us and i have no intention of repeating a, a problem that we've had in the past something that's just a consequence of a bunch of human beings who are interested in attempting to work together and aren't perfect at it. We're not Borg, we're not bees, and we're not ants, right? We're not, we're not hive minds. So we're going to have constant, you know, some issues with that. But, um, you know, the way to evolve that is to attack it a different way. So that's what we're trying to do here is to talk about the, whatever, this, the, the basics of the breakdown of the mechanics of it so that when we have in our conversations in the next 14 days, Basically, it's an all hands on deck, as far as I know, without again, getting too much into the call to action here. That'll be future videos. This is just the first step. You know, we're not going to have a two hour video and solve it. We're not going to have a two hour video where you can go, OK, I can throw thirty dollars at this and be done. That's ridiculous. And instead, we're going to consider all of these steps towards something that we're going to teach our grandkids because they're going to need to do something very similar except in a totally different playing field. They're gonna to have to have the resolve and the awareness that this is a never ending thing. There's no finish line and there's no little ribbon you get to run by, there's no fan. I mean, there's no winner, there's no uh, fans cheering us on. So anyway, with all that said, um, see Woods out there, if he has a chance, I send him a link as well. Um, oh, cool. so go back and see, so he said, text it. I don't know if maybe you know about text it, Bill going through well, early in the year. And then he followed up with the ABC boys sees the door opening for a four-year unchecked run or whatever they want. Uh, it would be cool if Neil still did the Green De Tavern. Wait. Yeah, Texan is the... Green Dragon. Uh, Green Dragon Tavern Chat is what it was. And I believe anybody knows where the Green Dragon Tavern Chat, or they got that name. Get extra credit. Okay, go ahead. I interrupted you. Oh, yeah. I was going to say Texan is the um, is like a succession movement, right? It's just it's kind of like a new a new name for like with Brexit and all the other exits. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. I'm not I'm not well schooled on that stuff. So I I, I don't think succession's likely, but but neither here nor there from the pistol brace conversation. So not necessary. I've heard Texas secession since I was a kid in basic and I was not a fan of it then. Um let's see. So then our shockwaves uh type next yeah we're talking about in this particular chat we're talking about uh research techniques uh big picture what the mechanism is that's happening right now the atf is there's a situation at play i'll let other channels hype you up on uh fear and 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 uh whatever about all that but instead let's talk about the mechanics what are we actually dealing with uh, it's an atf uh I don't know what the word is like it's an atf decision or interest in changing their, their 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 way that they enforce the laws or the way that they regulate or the way that they interpret i don't know what to even need what words to use if i knew the people to invite i would ask them and then they would offer the words perhaps but uh that's the thing is that if i figure if i don't know the whole picture how the hell is everybody else got the whole picture and then how do we win like we don't need to know everything we don't have to be geniuses but if we can make a couple of infographics that get the word around then we're doing something towards getting some more efficient conversation. So, yeah, I think with the ATF, uh, as far as 
addressing these different definitions to me, it definitely seems that they are taking it upon themselves to be interpreting this stuff. What's going on, Cobalt? Um, they're definitely taking it uh, on themselves to interpret what the law should be as opposed to having that be well prescribed or well defined in the law, which is a definitely a problem when you look at the judicial aspects of it, because law enforcement shouldn't be determining what the law is, right? Ever. That's not their their job. That's for Congress. When they write the law, they should be precise in what they indicate. And then that should be yielding uh, sufficient specificity for that to be taken into the courts and, and have these cases, these cases worked in process, but it also should be enough for law enforcement to be able to handle business and understand what is and what is not a violation of the law. So in my opinion, when Congress fails to do that, that's on them. We, we should be taking these things back to Congress and asking for them to clarify. Um, but, but having law enforcement do it doesn't seem to make sense to me. Because uh, it's not their job to write laws, right? That that's my understanding. Um, so that that would be my take there. Uh, did you happen to watch um, Jared's thing, Guns and Gear? No, Guns and Gadget. I forgot how Jared's been is, but uh, Jared did a thing today. He broke it down pretty decent and uh, uh, in pieces paragraphs at a time or whatever right so or at least portions at a time chunks at a time whatever maybe segments of sections at a time so that uh made it more obvious what the pieces are but it seems as though uh you can look at this as though there's like you know jack boots running around the government's out to get you or you could look at it again trying to go halfway and understand from the other side's point of view uh you could see it as if there's getting to where there's gray areas, like you just said, with the way the raw law was written and they're trying to interpret. Awesome. But if that's the case, we can, instead of getting all huffy and puffy, we can go awesome. So if that's the problem, let's get rid of that law that's written in perfectly. Let's attack the NFA directly. There's too many cowards that aren't willing to do that. There's too many lazies that say, oh, well, we've never been able to get people together to get rid of the NFA in the past. Since those people never got rid of the NFA, there's no way that their kids would ever get rid of the NFA. I don't agree with that. Mm. I see too many people that are woke, not just to bullshit crap, but woke to the fact that the NRA, NFA is bullshit. And uh, yeah, I think there's some potential with uh, motivated folks with intent to, uh, to, sh to challenge this, not on the fact that, oh, you know, the technicality of the blah, 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 if we comply, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but instead to say, you know, what's the justification for a law written in 1934 out of fear out of media, you know, uh, manipulation, and it's uh, done nothing but cause misery and confusion since we've got an elderly population that's aging out. I guess I'm turning this into a campaign for my position, but we got that elderly position that's aging out, or elderly generation that's aging out, uh, that could be uh, an advocate for uh, anything in the NFA, really, short, long, uh, lightweight, unobscure, anything. And then we got, uh, no, I don't believe this at all. This is something I've heard since 2013. I started hearing that before we had organizations that are efforting to get rid of it. I speak spoken. I know too many people that own firearms in the thirty to $50,000 range because of the NFA who are more than happy to have it be open because their gun is only going to go up in value. Anybody that knows economics knows that when a Thompson machine gun, submachine gun, excuse me, from uh, World War II or Thompson submachine gun of the Vietnam or Korean War era, right? That gun is not going to be devalued when they make Thompson's illegal again. All that's going to do is increase the demand for those original value oh, yeah. gu guns that exist. Those people are going to be multimillionaires. It's going to be amazing. Uh, people that suggest that haven't gone to places, suggest that uh, the the NFA community is against it, haven't gone to places like Vegas where they're literally changing the game. International firearms recreation tourism. Hello, this is 2020. It's not back in the old days. Uh, NFA is is to be challenged. And, and again, we, I'm not going to try to change it all tonight, but let's get in. I'm just going to, I went to JPFO. So I went to, what is this? DuckDuckGo instead of Google. Uh, search for some stuff. Found a, a JPFO, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, valid organization since 1975, one of the first yep. waves. 
Uh, they offered some insight from 2017, an article from uh, April 26, 2017, which answered my one of my original questions. I knew that they, in 2012, the ATF had constantly been getting uh, uh, questions from uh, the industry. When, you know, can we do this? Can we do this? Is there some way that we can make an AR-15 pistol more easy to wield because it's large or whatever? And it's still a pistol based on your 1934 definition. Is there some way that without having to do as some sort of registry and, and extra costs, some, can we make this gun more easy to deal with for people that are have uh, are differently able? So uh, in 2012, the ATF said ASB Tactical. Okay, and then you know life was how it is, and every, you know they evolved a little bit. Then in 2015, as I was mentioning before, right before SHOT Show, they go, oh, you know what? You can't hold that up to your shoulder anymore. And this by itself, I can remember this being a frustrating time because there's a whole procedure to the way the 1934 NFA works and people were raging against it in 2015, in my opinion, being played. Or if they weren't being played, we were opening ourselves up to being played because people were basically asking for easier regulation. Like, oh, make it easier to regulate the shit out of us. Please, please make oh, it yeah. easier to regulate the shit out of us. So uh, that was happening in 2015. And I wasn't sure, but at some point they reversed that decision. And it's mainly because I don't give a shit about braces. And I'm more interested in other stuff in 2A. But, you know, I knew that this happened. I just wasn't really paying attention in 17. So I just figured that out from this article. So. That's where I'm at. Is that's that's some of the main stuff I wanted to get across. Honestly, is just to have it down so that people know this has already been a weird, wishy-washy thing. And since some of us lived through this, uh, it's ridiculous. Since two of these things happened in the Trump administration, it's ridiculous to suggest that you know this isn't, or that this is the same as something that uh, happened when we were well, when some of y'all weren't even born yet, and some of us were younger. So uh, this isn't 94 and this isn't the end of the world, but it is a mechanism and our government, which is strong enough to last through two world wars and a civil war and a bunch of other shit that uh, if we can't, all, you know, figure out how to work a freaking boring mechanism like the U.S. government, you know what I'm saying? Like then yeah. some other idiot's going to do it. It's, it's just a thing. Like whoever the hell has been in a government job before understands that there's assholes that know how to work it. And that's what's happening right now. Don't get frustrated because of that. Just learn how to work it and teach our kids how to work it so that this is just a little bit less stress, hopefully, next time. But whatever. We're not trying to solve it tonight. I'm trying to uh, to dig in. So am I missing anything here? And I'm trying to make this a collaborative thing. If you're sitting here on your seats, get, get the hell out of here. This is for people who are using their keyboards and are interested in, like, throwing links in here. I'll shut up and let you know, talk about uh, the thing that the thing that's blowing my mind because like when I'm googling and everything, it's looking like I keep seeing 2012 for the first pistol brace, but that's blowing my mind because I could have sworn that like at least like some of the things that predate it, right? Like there were stocks on some of the um, World War II pistols back in the day, right? And there were um, I, I'm thinking of like the the I think it's the uh, score uh, the 61 Scorpion. Um, that had like a fold out stock and a, and a lot of things like that, that functionally could have been used as a brace, even if it was technically a stock. Um, the extendable wire thing, like on the, stock, yeah. like on a Mac. Yeah. So those were always just considered stocks and that was always frustrating too, because something like a scorpion, you'd have to figure out a way to break that. So that it couldn't even work or weld it shut just to have a, and then a scorpion submachine gun turned into a, well, not a submachine gun, it couldn't have a claw, but you know, some out of scorpion would it be an SBR with that thing without it. It's a pistol. So that, yeah, that was one, but there was just that technically was a thing, but not in this country. I'd never seen a scorpion until whoever started importing them in like 2000, mid 2000, then, you know, they started yeah. importing the semi-auto version and that was again, no stock, but uh, I didn't even see with people I knew who did weapon familiarization for the government, like that had access and had, inventory of interesting guns like maybe movie pl places had scorpions but i didn't see bringing scorpions around because i do know with like some of the modern technology we have like those micro roni kits and then there's some other minimalist kits that run on like a lot of the striker fire pistols so not just the ar-15 stuff right but stuff that you can pretty much just snap onto any glock or whatever where you have a fold out uh brace for your arm those well, are all that stuff is in israel 
because other countries don't have rules like we do. So Canada, I don't think they care about the size of the whole gun or something like that. So I don't know what's going on in Canada, but I know in Israel, uh, they, that's where a lot of the Glock pieces you're talking about from like, well, the various companies that all come from Israel that make plastic stuff for Glocks and other guns. Uh, that's just because they don't have those. And almost everybody over there carries, right? I don't know if it's still a law or whatever they have to or something, or they definitely can. And uh, that's probably why, right? Like if you're trying to shoot a, I don't know, Glock is your only gun. They're only allowed to have one Glock from what I remember from our chats with people in Israel. They can have one gun at a time. So they've got to make as much use out of that gun as possible. So if they want to take their, you know, 19 to the range or something, and uh, shoot it, they might want to put a, a brace on or stock on it. Yeah, and I think it's just a matter of trying to find what's old because I, I think I think it's kind of difficult to find like the archive listings, but that's, that's kind of where I'm trying to dig right now is to see, hey, is there anything old where we can see pre-2012 where they were it's calling it a pistol brace? That would be really okay. interesting. I would look at stuff from 2012 because the articles from 2012 will probably somewhere a decent like this one, like the one from uh, JPFO was a pretty decent article in 2017, which covered 12, 15 and the new changes in 17. Um, so something that might talk about like, this is what happened and this is unprecedented because it hasn't happened since, right? Um, because I don't really remember it even being a thing until 12. like. I mean, it literally wasn't even a thing. Everybody just was happy to have uh, uh, AR and AK pistols without stocks on them. And no one even just thought about ever bracing them. If anything, we were worried and we were can, not worried, but we were focused on the AFG. Uh, Magpul had come out with a vertical, or what is it called? AFG, angled vertical foregrip. So it was designed to set on a rail and create an angle. And I don't think they actually invented it for a pistol sized gun. They just invented it. And then two seconds later, somebody's like, well, what the hell if I put it on a pistol? Because up until then, having an AR pistol with like a vert foregrip, well, that is against the law. You can't do that. It becomes an AOW. Mm -hmm. So if you take an AR pistol and you put a vert grip on it, it's an AOW. Take the vert grip off and put a stock on it. It's an SBR. Take that stock off and put the wrong kind of trigger group in it. And it's a full auto. Once it's a full lot, you can put the other things on. But if it's the other things, you can't put the other parts on. So, yeah, it's a weird kind of a puzzle game that's not funny. Um, so, yeah, the those things were our biggest concerns, whether or not you could put an angled vert, uh, foregrip or vertical grip on a uh, uh, pistol or not, because that was a big deal. I mean, that allowed you to basically get a little bit more use out of an AK pistol uh, or an AR pistol, I guess. Uh, so yeah, Wolf Wind is saying that uh, braces are common now, and that's the thing. Uh, mm. I don't want to hear more. You know, there's there's a lot that we when this has happened in the past, the cycle has been let's complain and mope and complain, right? And do nothing more than that. Occasionally, a couple of people do something about it, but you know, start something or get something going that works towards efforting. But most of the time, we just complain about it. Well, instead of complaining about it, right? Uh, why don't we start talking about precedent? When we start talking about getting organizations around that or whatever groups of people together that can bring different angles on this one. Like I said, there's so many angles on braces specifically. I mean, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the whole thing with the pistol braces is just a workaround for the stock issue. Um, personally. And I know not everyone shares that opinion. Some people do like to consider their, pistol braces separate from stocks very deliberately uh, for whatever reasons. But for on my end of things, I'm like, well, if you're using it to shoulder, to me, that's what makes it a stock regardless of, you know what I mean? Like that to me, like that's what we're doing. And so it's like, like it's kind of a screw you to the NFA, a screw you to the ATF when we use pistol braces. So I want to keep them for that reason. Um, but I don't know mm -hmm. if other people have a take on like techniques with pistol braces or if there's good, resources for shooting with those um technique wise because it's not something that um i've ever done i've never shot something that i've never shot like an ar pistol i've never shot anything with a pistol brace so i don't know if other people maybe see those differently or see a different niche for them a couple of things so the braces are designed for people with disabilities somebody that's got differently able they can't hold their hand good right they got a shoulder issue they got a piece of something missing whatever um, maybe it's their vision, 
right? And they can have something like that and then allow them to hold that thing in a different way and let them hold something else, like whatever. It could be a million different things, but it's designed to give more ability to a thing to comply with the laws that exist. So it wasn't a workaround in any way, shape, or form. It was a compliance with the existing laws which prohibit uh, a medium-sized firearm being made for somebody that has not normal, uh, what's the word, like ergonomics. So, and then of course you can't just make a, a weird shaped Frisbee gun either because of the NFA. So it was definitely compliance, not workaround. And as far as like having it exist as a thumb, no, it, it, it existed in the first place because the law is written poorly. The law is written poorly because it was quickly written in response to media hype over BS, over unwarranted concern right over what could happen or what might happen, but not over anything that actually happened, right? So the law is poorly written. So instead of petitioning for the braces to stick around so that they illustrate how poorly written the law is, why don't we just get rid of the law, right? So this is the reason to, to suggest that the NFA is not necessary, it's poorly written and to get rid of it. Um, so I, I hear what you're saying, but, uh, when we created these things in 2012 and they started to be used in different ways by different people and the ATF shows that they had trouble and difficulty. Anybody who's surprised isn't paying attention. I mean, come on, name anything that is different and then has some controversy that just calms down. And then, you know, that's like saying, Oh, the car made a lot of noise and then smoke started coming out of it, but I just kept driving and it got better. Of course that doesn't happen you're just ignoring something right so we knew that in 2012 this was going to create either precedence or open pandora's box so if we're going to now eight years later not consider the precedent and the how many millions of them you know we got a lot of potential here a lot of potential um so I'm not trying to tear down. I just said, I definitely don't. Oh, no, it. like I, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that world. Like it's, it's a device that I haven't used, which is why I have those, those questions. No, I've, I've seen, I've seen the tactic guy, the tactical guys do something different, but, but yeah, of that's course. different so, from what people with disabilities and how they shoot. Cause I haven't shot with people with disabilities. Yeah. I mean, if you get in a convertible, so, you want to think you're James Bond, somebody else gets in convertible and wants to think they're, somebody else drives a convertible, you know, there's no, who cares? You can drive a convertible. You can do whatever you want. You're convertible. Um, but yeah, as far as shouldering it, they're too short of a length of pole for anything useful. I mean, is there anybody that buys a rifle besides a child or somebody that's very small and arm length that's going to buy a rifle or an AR style rifle and then collapse the stock completely except for travel. Nobody really does that. For the most part, most people go to, you know, a couple of notches out on a couple of position stock or whatever which the holes are even further out. So the brace was designed originally to comply with that perception that it would just be a, you know, a $200 money saver or whatever. But the fact that because it created something that could be used in different ways, and then the ATF started to waver on that, again, that's, I, I we can get mad about that, but that's how, I mean, what do we expect the NFA to just disappear because it's written on disappearing ink? Is the NFA going to disappear because uh, government decided, hey, you know what? People have been good. Let's get rid of the NFA. Like, because the Easter Bunny is going to come along and get rid of the NFA? Or is it going to be like pulling off a Band-Aid where there's a little bit of annoyance when it's ripping off hair or scab or whatever gross stuff is underneath that Band-Aid? And maybe another Band-Aid has to go on when you get done ripping off that Band-Aid. But eventually the wound heals, right? So anyway. Not scold yeah. anybody, but come on, let's be realistic. We knew that this thing was heading towards either precedent or Pandora's box, and whatever. Like, we got a lot of stuff going on. It's not like they got a calm ride. They got nothing else to do but gun stuff, right? Like, there's no health issues. There's no financial issues. It's just gun stuff. I'm not saying we got to back down. I'm just saying we got all the advantages in the world to wail on. If they come after us with gun stuff, let's go. Let's let's take it. Or don't, you know, go go complain about it. Don't, don't, you don't have to be. There's definitely going to be a consensus of people that complain. Now I'm going to try to address uh, Foose's stuff here because he's been saying stuff and known Foose for a long time. So let's see. Uh, I think first of all, I was saying, do we have a chance Trump will squash it? 
Honestly, I don't know, and I don't pay attention. So who's the saying if we call them? Uh, I don't have an 80 or a brace, but damn, this is not good. I will be right on. Uh, definitely more than just right. And you've been in the game for a while. So I'm hoping that you'll be one of the people to offer some insight as to what we can do to adapt our game. I believe that if we do the same thing every time, if we are the same, uh, if we are a, what do I, so did I say yesterday? If we're, if we act consistently, if we do not alter our reaction to their attacks, then we become a mechanism to be used. We aren't uh, an adversary anymore. We are no longer something that they fear when we react the same way each time. And this is not the first time this has happened. It might be the first time some people are aware of it or the first time it's in their consciousness or the first time it's in their newsfeed, but this is certainly not the first time it's happened. And if we, again, become too consistent, if we're uh, a, a known variable, then that's all we are, is a tool in the machine. We need to do stuff to uh, uh, to throw them for a loop so that we become not just the squeaky wheel, but whatever the, you know, the, the difficult uh, adversary to anticipate. Um, yeah, that's news of the day. There's lots of people that can tell you about news of the day. Uh, they said based on caliber, I guess they don't know that the 500 has re more recall than a 308. Well, that's the thing. And if we get bogged down in, uh, how does Churchill say, if you walk, if you throw a rock at every barking dog, you'll never get to your goal. But um, mm -hmm. those are definitely angles. And I don't want to blow that off because uh, Foose obviously is a fellow ammo interested type. And yeah, that's the kind of stuff that if you're going to try to amend poorly written, written law with vaguely written law, that's not helping nobody. And that might be an angle when we're going to be efforting for the next 14 days. I doubt it's going to be one thing that we effort on more and more. And then that wins. We don't just sing one song really loud and that changes their mind. Right. So I like in the idea that we go after it from different angles. And from what I understand from the one 20 minute video where he was explaining it, it sounded like they left the caliber thing completely vague. Like if it was of a caliber that makes it heavy, whatever the F that means. Uh, we all have different length like, arms. Yep, exactly. Well, and that's the, that's the problem, right? Is that we don't want the ATF to be in a position where they can just make up whatever they want the law to mean because it's so ambiguous, right? So to that point of abolish the NFA, like, yeah, it's unclear. <laughs> so So why would we have an unclear law ever? Right. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. It seems to be a waste of money. Right. Yeah. And it, and it definitely has just been an effort. And we've had tons of precedent. We've had, we've had generations of you know an evolution of materials and it hasn't done anything necessary. So, yeah. And it would be a great step forward towards giving the government, you know, less to do. Less bad stuff to get done. Uh, brace clear. Okay, Enrique saying braces clearly demonstrate that it is used as a helpful accessory that uh, helps physically challenge peoples to defend themselves. Government infringing this right is rough shot abuse. I believe I agree 100%. I've been saying I've been advocate for a long time that NFA should not apply to anybody with the ADA. Anybody who's covered by the ADA, the NFA should not apply. And this, I believe, is another angle that we should go after this one, especially when they're talking about braces, but also with uh, hearing, hearing protection now. Uh, let's see. So if these braces, uh, Foose is saying if these braces are a workaround for an SBR, then there are no crimes done and there are no crimes done with a brace and an SBR is a moot point and needs to be removed. Exactly. So that's my goal. My, my thing is that for eight years now, we've had, um, uh, precedent, right? Is, am I using the right word? Yeah, I think so. I think it applies to that. Like we've had, you know, eight years of existence of this situation. The thing is they are used in crimes or whatever, but not with braces. I mean, maybe with braces, but it's not like the the crime was facilitated or made more deadly or anything because of it. And uh, yeah, there's no way to prove any of that crap. So, and that's the thing, it's, uh, it, it has already happened. So we've, we've got that. Uh, we just have to figure out a way to express that and get it across to people because we're not fighting the NFA or the ATF. The ATF is a bunch of people who are doing what they think people want. If we can get our, if we can, uh, our goal here is to get to a bunch of people, right? To allow a bunch of people to understand what's going on so that there's no support for this draconian crap. Yeah. And I think there's just that, that side of it where it's, 
like if if you had a stock on there somehow somehow this is so offensive and somehow this is so requiring of legal action is it does does the stock make it more deadly does the stock and and if so how like please tell me how a stock changes terminal ballistics um but if we take the stock off and we had nothing but a buffer tube say on an ar-15 that would be acceptable because now now we're a you know a pistol instead of a short barreled rifle and it, it just seems that we didn't capture anything useful with the definition and so the point isn't that look, these lawmakers don't know what they're talking about. Like, we all know that that's that's something we can take for granted. The point really would be, okay, if you're going to make laws that designate different classes of firearms as different things and and what have you, then yeah, we need to just get to the core of it and understand what those categories are, why they're made the way that they're made, um, how we can make better categories, especially if it's gun owners who are informing you on how to make better categories of firearms. And then we can address things that way. I'm not down for regulation at all. If we are, however, to regulate for some reason, then at least can we do it in a sane way that's clear and not deferring to law enforcement to decide administratively? Because we've seen the problems with that. We've seen the overreach with that. That's the problem. Um, That's a problem that gets people killed. Um, That's not the fear monger, but that's um, that's a problem that absolutely... um, uh, creates administrative delays, allows for administrative delays, allows for uh, discretion with political actors, uh, can be used. Um, a, similar, a similar style of thinking was actually used by Kamala Harris to um, deny ammo background checks and to um, keep people from being able to appeal a lot of this kind of administrative behind the scenes stuff because things are so poorly defined. So these are these are things that have a real world impact. And it's not just the gun community that suffers from uh, poorly defined laws. It's everyone in the U.S. Every citizen, regardless of if you care about guns or not, you all suffer. So, um, so Urswell said it's in the likely situation we're facing the Democrat Congress, Senate, um, President. We have a negative zero percent chance of getting rid of the NFA this term. So negative zero, the negative of zero is infinity. So that's infinity chance. We got all the chances. <laughs> um, but I hear what you're saying. And uh, I don't look at it that way. Um, I think that, again, we've got a situation that's unprecedented. So no one's going to tell me that they've seen this before. Uh, we've definitely seen this particular mechanism being used before. Uh, and we know that there's a bunch of stuff uh, potentially getting set up or racked up or whatever you want to say, like getting in place. Uh, but again, it's not in a scenario where they've got nothing else going for them, like, or they got everything else going for them. Like, like they've got a raging economy and they've got no uh, international issues and uh, there's plenty and, you know, there's massive crime. Like, they don't have any of those normal scenarios that you would need to blow something right through. And that doesn't mean just lay back and do nothing. It just means this is a great opportunity for us to work to not just resist this, I mean, if everybody just wants to, you know, let's say that this is a karate fight since everything comes down to Kung Fu or whatever. Like if you just want to defend, if your goal is to stop slapping some of this, these fuckers are coming up and slapping you in the face and your goal is to just stop them from slapping you in the face. I mean, we can do that. A lot of times you can do that really effectively out of reflex and you can stand out of the way, you could walk away, whatever. But one way to get people to stop slapping you in the face is to like, move out of the way or keto them or something so that they fall into a pile of mud or whatever, right? Or they fall into a mud puddle or, you know, slap them back in the face or something. So a long time we've been occasionally slapping them in the face and they occasionally slap us in the face. I'm suggesting it's really fun. And this happened in 19 in 1994. So I got to see this and I wasn't like paying attention. I was there, but I wasn't watching it with popcorn watching it. But after the fact, I'm doing my best to remember it and and get the pieces that recorded it. But in 1994, they did some crap that lasted for 10 years. And every piece, every single last one of them, from what I remember, lost office. And that was uh, not because we had a bunch of people, superheroes telling us how to do it or some kind of set of directions that we unfolded and read. But instead, it was just the organic consequence of tyranny trying to be imposed on free people. And... You know, you can be all as pessimistic as you want, but uh, you don't need to be. There's lots of strategies to be aware and uh, useful in times of stress. And that's what we're going to effort towards to continue to effort towards what we tried to do today is 
start out with the uh, beginnings of a piece to piece sort of a collaborative research event. And I'll summarize the end here as we wrap up and go into the Daily Gun Show on the other channel. Um, what this will start this what this was the start of. But um, but yeah, I hear what you're saying that it doesn't look easy. But man, watch a freaking movie! Like, come on! Like, it never looks. I mean, and and, and I mean, movies are just parable of the you know things that have happened in real life. Like, look at history. Uh, very rarely does an awesome pivotal thing in history. S- you don't see that coming. Nothing gets telegraphed. Like, you know, it, it, when two people face off and somebody gets flipped over, it's often the unexpected one. It's from tactics and awareness and intent. And I am not going to back down. I've been through too many of these fights. I've seen too many victories. And the failures are not failures of the other. Are you telling me that the other side is so good that they've outnumbered us or they've outpositioned us? No. They've simply yelled and screamed enough that we've been discombobulated enough that we haven't worked together. And that's the only thing that they've been able to do in the whole history of our country to mess with us. All we got to do is figure out how to work together. We do it all the freaking time when we want to do something. When we go to Disneyland, a whole bunch of people that hate each other figure out how to cram into a freaking small parking lot and then cram even into a smaller property and pay outrageous prices to watch their kids be happy. So don't tell me that you don't know how to work together or walk in the same direction with a bunch of people you would otherwise not have anything to do with. Uh, When we go to gun shows, we hang out with people that we probably wouldn't go invite to the range, but we're just, you know, we're able to coexist. That's all we got to do as we fight. So there's going to be plenty of people that have gone through this before, and they're going to see how to exploit this, and they're going to know what buttons to push in a mammal's brain to make you upset and to ignore all the good stuff that's happening or all the positive ways that we have to affect change. Uh, and they're going to continue to, to do those things. And I'm going to do what we can on this end to invite people in to be the alternative to that. Uh, we're not offering any easy answers or any simple solutions. That re- is ridiculous. We're not suggesting unity or some sort of walking together in a kind of weird Borg or communist lockstep. But instead, just like when we go to the gun show or we go hunting or something, we we go out there and we kill an elk or we kill a deer or something. You don't care if the other hunter has the same religion or you wears the same kind of pants as you likes your same caliber right. or whatever. Right. All right. I'll shut up. Well, yeah, um, no, you're there to have a good time. But, <laughs> um, I mean, like that's the thing, right. Is, is I think at the end of the day, well, a lot of the times when we talk about these struggles and everything um, and we talk about how difficult it can be to be motivated and to be a good activist, um, a lot of the times when you feel like your teeth are getting kicked in is when an opportunity presents itself. Um, that's something that I learned in sales. That's something that I learned uh, just in, with my background. A lot of the time when you feel like you're not making progress, you're actually making a lot and you just don't see it. Um, but yeah, um, I'm seeing a uh, cobalt's comments here. Um, this gosh. was the next one after the 0% chance. So, so he yeah. says, as far as I'm aware, the 2A is very clear. No infringements on keeping and burying arms. The government, regardless of partisan leaning, making laws and agencies to violate it should be unconstitutional. So how do we convince the Supreme Court to this fact? I think that's another angle. I mean, that's not that's 100% valid. It's just it, you can't have it as your only tact because there's people in the guns, in the gun industry, uh, not industry, in the gun community that don't agree with that. So it's a valid tact and it's a core one. I think, but all that Waltons. Yeah, I think my answer would be to really get them to be forced on the issue, like force them to with with a case that really needs to be defined, um, more so than some of the cases that we've thrown there. And I know that there's going to be people rolling their eyes when I say that, um, and that's totally cool. Uh, but I think that if the Supreme Court can get a case like the the case like in the case of Heller, that was a pretty big situation that needed to be defined if we look at the context where that happened having to keep a handgun disassembled and locked up and ammo stored separately and all these crazy regulations was absolutely insane and that that demonstrated a need for scotus to intervene so i don't know that some of these are things that scotus frankly cares about and so i I think if we can get them what they care about and use that to maybe snowball in more and more and, and kind of educate them more and engage it, uh, engage on it. I think that might be a good way to go, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. Um, the other option would be, uh, we always talk about bipartisan 
bipartisanship in SCOTUS and, and making sure that the courts are balanced in favor of 2A or in favor of our civil liberties more broadly. I think another thing to look at is where's the libertarian, <laughs> where's the libertarian on SCOTUS, right? Um, we don't, we don't have that straight up. We have left and right. And that's kind of how we look at it. And not even that we have like Democrat and Republican. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe seeing a little bit more intellectual diversity on SCOTUS would be good and would probably be helpful for that. Um, those would be the kinds of things that I'd look at. Uh, let's see. So then he followed with, um, well, let's see. Let's see. Then it went to Ursoil saying, if Texas doesn't work, then to hide in the sanctuary. Eh, I don't know. Hang on to the Daily Gun Show. I'm never going to get behind Hayden. It's too easy. What if the whole thing, you know, we don't know what's going on for really. We just have our uh, awareness of what we're seeing from this end, right? So how do we know this whole thing isn't like 16 or six teenagers in Russia who just happen to work in the back room of some yeah. has the facilities to screw with us and they're just laughing their asses off and, and, and Biden is just going, huh, what? Oh, this is working. Great. Yeah, great, great, great. Right? Like, why are we giving it to anybody? Make it as difficult as possible. So I'm never going to be like, uh, you know, hey, let's let's calm down or something. No, let's this is the time to fight. And if it and if we don't win, I mean, what the fuck? We go train when it's tough. We go train when it's cold. And I mean, there's people that I remember back in the day, dude would go uh, training with a, a freaking mask on that simulated the high altitude, and he'd go hiking through the winter to get ready for an elk hunt. You know. Um, nah, we're used to working through adversity uh, to gain better uh, techniques and strength and training. So bring it. Like, again, we're, we're stronger than all of them. Bring it. Um, but anyway, so uh, Foose is saying the government will never write a clear law. They want to have their hand. They don't want to have their hands tied when their minds change. I don't know if you stole that from somewhere, but that's a great way to say it. I really like that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like shall not be infringed and like Congress shall make no law, you know, um, <laughs> regarding your your speech practice of religion right freedom of the press and all that like i feel like the constitution was pretty clear <laughs> and we have tried i i feel like there's some things where we've tried our damnedest to make it unclear not us in two a world but like lawyers and politicians so and then things are so definitely feel that we don't, we don't yeah. live on a straight line we don't live on a series of dots we live on a curve and uh you know, the whole saying about weak times make weak people and blah, 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 and all the cycles, right? So yeah, there's been, this isn't a consistent government that's increasingly getting anything. It's just curves. It's we're on uh, trends. And uh, if we're getting to a point where it's uh, bad, then it's our obligation and our right and our uh, responsibility to stand up, bring it back. Eventually it'll get too loose right? It'll be all crazy hippie government. And then everybody will go, oh, hold on. We need to have something there. We need our roads. And then it'll get, you know, back in this direction again. And if you think it's over, what the hell? You watch too much Star Trek. Uh, Cobalt goes back to, I cannot get behind any idea of regulation on ownership of firearms. This wasn't a problem almost 200 years ago, despite two insurrections under the, wait, is that the same thing? Under the Washington, despite the Civil War, seems like um, yeah, so we just said, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so I don't advocate for I don't advocate for regulating what you can own at all. Um, as far as just me personally, the types of things that I'm okay with being regulated are the same things that we would regulate in other industries. So, for instance, if a firearms manufacturer sold you a gun that exploded in your hands, right when you fired it, and that happened to fifty percent of people, that would be outrageous. I think you should be able to sue them. But I don't think that you should be able to sue a firearm manufacturer for um, like if, if someone shot someone with a Springfield Armory, whatever. I don't think you should be able to sue Springfield for that. I think you should sue the shooter. Um, you should right sue the murderer, or sue the, the person who assaulted you, sue the actual criminal. So um, I think that we should treat our liabilities and responsibilities with firearms the same way we treat liability and responsibility everywhere else in our lives which is on a very common sense basis. I don't think it requires exceptional laws. I think it's something where we understand like, hey, if I push someone into the way of traffic, I would get in trouble for that. If I shoot someone that I shouldn't shoot, I would get in trouble for that. If I stab someone I shouldn't stab, I should get in trouble for that. Um, I don't think that there's exceptional regulation here needed to, it's just, it's unnecessary in my mind. So if that makes sense, but yeah, I don't, 
I, I think when going back to the comment that I made, if they're going to regulate us, then I want them to be specific and clear. That would help us greatly with legal challenges. That regulation typically, yes, would be a um, uh, would be like a loss, right? Because we don't want to be regulated. But if I'm going to lose, I would prefer to lose in a way that's productive for me that helps me win more later, if that makes sense. So that's kind of more or less where I'm going with that. Because if you oh, say yeah, no. if you say no. rivals aren't good or are not allowed, then great. Now I can go after you constitutionally because you wrote that down, right? So, so if you make it clear that hey, this is not allowed, and it's like, well, guess what? I have a Second Amendment right that protects exactly that. Or you say, hey, knives are not allowed, or swords are not allowed. I can go. There's a Second Amendment right to that item, actually. So, let's go fight it out in court, and it makes it a lot easier to deal with. So. Well, no, exactly. And you got sort of the when are you going to stop beating your wife question. Like, it's yeah. uh, not like you were advocating for laws, but like mm. you just clarified. So uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up. We do have a daily gun show. We do that every weeknight. And uh, I really just wanted to uh, put a little effort into I was screen sharing a little earlier here. Um, just put a little effort into an infographic, a way to uh, for my own head, just to put into uh, visual uh whatever a uh, timeline of this situation with races. I'm not looking to do some sort of historical thing, just something simple bullet points that we can use when we're having these discussions so that we're not uh, walking through the dark uh, as far as awareness of the, the kind of whatever eight year back and forth history of these things and all the things that we kind of talked about in the chat part of this one, uh, the precedents and, uh, oh, we didn't hit this one. I thought it was pretty interesting. Enrique was saying, uh, this event could be a PR trick to get people on the right to make a confrontational, confrontational noise towards Trump before the runoff. And yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the, yeah. the set and setting, the timing of this is freaking irksome. Is that a correct word to use? Like it is annoying yeah. as all hell. This was not, oh, we had nothing else to do on the week before or the, the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Ask you, anyone in a position of, of government to do anything at a time when people are, you know, uh, what family, what's the word, like familiarly uh, tied up or whatever, like, come on, what the hell, just have some some uh, awareness of, well, they do have awareness, they're doing it intentionally to make it a burden and impossible to deal with. Yeah, it's, it's you know, my, my favorite conspiracy would be that um, it's a trick from firearms manufacturers to be able to sell a whole lot right now and then have the ATF immediately back off. But I know for a fact that won't happen. That's just a fantasy that I like to espouse. So um, <laughs> that's that's a, I think I think that it, it might be the ATF has um, some people that are longtime employees of the state that aren't necessarily going anywhere um, that are doing what they think they can do. Uh, knowing that they're going to transition to Biden and knowing that Trump's not too worried about your second amendment rights. So that's oh, my take. Yeah, you just summarized it. So you're talking about ETF, the BATFE acting director, Regina Lombardo and the BATFE associate deputy director, Martin or Marvin Richardson, neither of which are actually permanent uh, employees in those positions. And uh, Trump had a thing up, in 2017 that I found during my research today. Do I still have it up? No. Um, where uh, he was mentioning something about an Article F or something where you can, where Trump did an executive action in order to make a new level of government employee that he could transition people to in order to fire them easier than when they're embedded in government bureaucracy. So uh, he was, Trump was suggesting that back in like 17. Like, uh, why isn't that taking place with these two? So, uh, uh, friend Argo over on the Instagrams up from Wisconsin did a uh, defund the ATF post on Instagram today. I guess I could easily jump over there. And uh, we could end it on that perhaps. But uh, whatever, they're a mechanism and everything we're doing here. Uh, am I going to be able to find it? Right now, fast. So, um, Everything that we're doing here is uh, either repetition of what we've done before or what has been done before, in which case I believe we're being used by the other side, or we can make it really difficult for them to anticipate what we're going to do. We can get stronger, better. We have great tools. Uh, we should be able to improve our, com our communication conversation, our collaborations, and all the other C's going forward. 
Uh, ignore the people that are fakes and the frauds and the people that are too afraid to get up and do something uh, or that are going to just sit around observing and complaining. Uh, you know, this is going to be a time when that becomes super obvious of who's on, you know, who, what their goals are, what their ambitions are. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for joining. We'll be back to pick you up later. Take it easy, guys.